And welcome to Tanya, our, uh, our artist and art instructor. Thank you for being here. Thanks for joining us in the ATL. Tanya, it's all yours. Thanks so much, Rabbi Ari. Um, I, you know, I actually love the Bob Ross mention because Bob Ross is actually the one who started this concept of paint night. So for anyone here, I know paint night's been super popular in Toronto for a long time, but I don't know, uh, you know, in this group, how many of us have had the pleasure of doing one yet. But I want to just give you a quick little rundown of what it's about before we start. So as you can see, this is not paint by numbers. You all got blank canvases to start with. This is an art workshop that is designed for people who never paint, who have never painted before. So they do something from start to finish with no previous experience. So the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna give very, very step-by-step -step, um, instruction using the same materials as you on my canvas. And I, I'm, I'm very sure that you guys are gonna make something that you could be really proud of um, by the end of the night. So the goal here, as much as we try to pay attention and do a good job, I also want everyone to a little bit let loose um, and just try to have fun with it tonight, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna pick up this super beautiful, um, I've taught a lot of paint nights, this is by far um, one of the most special pieces, obviously, because you look at it, and you feel a feeling like you're, you know, in, in the holiest land in the world. Um, so we're going to be painting the Kotel tonight. I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of what we're doing first. So what we're doing first is just the sky and the floor, because as you can see, it uses a lot of the same colors. Um, and we're going to be doing the Kotel next. So you're going to ignore all the trees and all the detail now. We're not going to be doing that for a while. So when you look in the sky and the ground, actually, you see a little bit of blue, you see a little bit of purple, you see a lot of white, um, but what you see is how they're beautifully blended into one another. Um, so I'm going to be teaching you guys a basic technique called blending to place color on canvas and then get it to do something really cool like this. So before we get started, what you do have in your kits is you have blue. Excuse me. Yes. Well, I can hardly see it. You're, it's very small and I don't know how to make it. Okay. Long. Okay. So that's good. Uh, you need to go to view on the top right. Are you on speaker or gallery mode? Uh, that's just the thing. The thing that usually says view is not there. It's covered. It says just has your name is sharing computer sound. And I don't have it. It doesn't even have the view up there. Okay, so try another thing. Try to go to my name and there should be three dots. Can you pin me? Select the three dots and then it should say pin. And that should make me big. Go to your name. Not doing anything. I'm trying. The name that's under your, under you. Tanya, yeah, if you see me, it should say more. Or if you see my picture on top where you actually see me. I see the more. Yeah, so is there anything that says pin or spotlight? The three dots. I've got the three dots. It just says participants invite chat and record. Okay, so what, what about on top when you see my actual video of me talking, there should be, if you put your mouse there, there should be two dots next to the mute button. Okay, it says mute audio, stop video, hide self view, and rename. There's nothing that says add spotlight or pin? No, no. That's a crap anybody at Zoom? Uh, no, I usually can see oh. it big, Fred. I don't know why it's not. Listen, you're just going to have to go. Yeah, but I can't that. see. You'll have to go. Donna what, Donna, what type of device are you on? On the same computer I always use that I always see you and I always and it's always fine. So just just go mm. with it. Well, I'll just have to do the best I can. I don't understand why it's so small. That's all right. Okay, you'll figure it out. I can't see. All right, I don't want to hold the class. Donna, we are recording. Um, so hopefully you guys can figure out because it doesn't make any sense that you can't pin me. Um, hopefully you guys can figure it out soon, okay? But if you do okay, see me, I'll try. Will catch you up, okay? Okay. I'm so, sorry. I'm so sorry about that. That's okay. okay. I'll figure it out. All right, everybody. So let's get started. What I want everyone to do is first put on some white on your plate. So you can use your red brush. Take out your red brush. It's your biggest brush. Oh, and I forgot about that. Oh, no, brush. I can't see it at all. Uh, I lost. 
And I'm also going to ask everyone when we actually start painting, if while you're doing what I'm telling you, if you could show me your canvases at any point while you're actually painting or show me your plate, I'm going to ask for cues since I'm not with you in person. So what I want you to do is just take a nice generous scoop of white. You know what? So it looks like the same. I'll take a little cup of white. You're going to take your red brush and we want to put two uh, pretty generous scoops of white on our plate. So we're going to go one. And now we're going to go to I have muted myself just for the beginning so everyone can hear this uh, very uh, clearly. You guys can unmute very soon or as soon as you have a question, feel free to unmute. So make sure everybody you have two whites on your plate. Give me a thumbs up, please. When you have it. Thank you. Now we have two whites. We want to turn now, actually, no, just give your brush a rinse now for the first time in the water. Give it a rinse in the water, dry it off on the paper towel. And now what I want you to do is put one blue, one area of blue about the same size. So just the regular blue. I have it in a big bottle here. And then a little bit of red. So anywhere on your plate, you're gonna put a little bit of red. So we have two whites, a blue, and a red it doesn't need to be so much red just a little bit like that and you can give me a thumbs up please any any thumbs up really helps we've got our four colors white white blue red donna you got it working no okay he's trying your best <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. So the reason why we put two whites is because we're gonna use one of the whites to make this light blue that we see in the painting. So I'm gonna pick up my brush once more. You can always give your brush a little rinse between uh, colors or between jobs, right? Every time thing it's doing, it's working here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn one of our whites into a light blue. So what we wanna do is just pick up a little bit of blue. Okay, so a very, very, very small amount. Okay, so if you see here, and you're gonna choose one of your whites and you're gonna mix that blue Without mixing the paint out all over the plate, we're going to try to keep the mixes really, the uh, little swirls of our brush really small. And if you see here are the difference between the blue that you started with and then the light blue that I'm having you make, there's quite a difference. And I'm going to hold it up here so you guys can match it. And I want you to do this as soon as you're done, you rinse your brush and dry it off on the paper towel. And we're gonna make one more color before we begin. So when you're done, we got the light blue is the first color we made. And the second color we're gonna make is purple. And that's gonna be the second color and we're ready to start painting. So there isn't so much purple on this painting, but we do have hints of it. I'm gonna give you the option to add more if you wanna see more of it. But how do we make purple? Very simple, we mix red and blue together. That's how we get purple. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is take that same brush that we've been using all along. We're gonna pick up some blue. So the blue gets picked up and it gets transferred into the entire red, okay? And that color, you don't even need to mix into your full red. Just mix until you get a bit of purple. Doesn't need to be a whole lot of purple, but that blue into the red. And there we have it. So we're gonna be left with this palette that has two types of blue, dark blue and light blue. Then we have white, then we have purple. So four colors. I want you just to hold up your clean brush like this for me whenever you're ready. Thank you. 
So the first part of this painting is going to be mostly, um, we're going to be mostly painting in white here. So I'm going to hold up my canvas. So let's figure out where does the sky start? So you might wonder, well, it's actually, the Kotel is not as big as we may think it is. It doesn't take up that huge portion. The sky takes up a half the canvas. It's a big part of the canvas. So this makes our job a little bit easier tonight. All you wanna do is put your finger um, roughly in the middle. And what you're gonna be doing with a clean brush is you're gonna start painting only white halfway across. And you're gonna go about like a third or a half of the way up just with white. So you could take your white paint directly from your cup if it's easier because you're gonna have to paint a lot. And what you wanna first do is, let me show you the brush stroke. So all eyes up here. So when you go across, I'm holding this really close. With every single brush, you can either get a, a narrow stroke, so very thin, depending on how you hold your brush, or if you twist the brush to the side, you get a wide stroke. See, so if you, if you see it from a side angle, it's the widest stroke that you could possibly get with this flat square brush. So although you cannot see really what I'm painting because it is white, believe me, there's white here. So first you're gonna go across the middle. I know it's a little bit like it's a weird color to start painting with because you can't see it so well, but I'm gonna actually just put my finger where I'm starting to paint. And I want us to go up with white about, uh, let's go up about halfway, okay? Tanya, I have a question for you, I'm sorry. You're holding the canvas vertically, but the painting that's in on display is horizontal. So we're it's supposed not. to, oh no, I'm sorry. It looked horizontal to me, I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. You know what, I, I should always just say it at the beginning, just whatever, <laughs> but I didn't, but thanks for pointing it out. So vertical, so what we want everyone to do here is just paint back and forth. And I want you guys to get into this habit of trying to just take the paint and trying to paint from one edge to the other without stopping. It's tempting to just go across with small strokes. You want to try to get your arm a little sore um, in doing this. And I'm going to just have to get your cues. I'm going to do it really quickly and then I'm going to start looking at you guys. And if you add a tiny bit of water, by the way, to a little bit of white on your plate, it actually makes the paint even more fluid and a little bit easier to spread. So if you want to do that, add a bit of white and a bit of water. And okay, I, I have a question. Um, I already um, did my canvas wrong. I put it on the way, the um, not the horizontal way. I mean, I put it that way. And I'm doing it like that. Is that going to mess it up? No, no, what? No. All you got to do is now flip it horizontal. Uh -huh. Even if there's paint now going across, it'll dry. The whatever's here at the bottom will be dry when we're done the sky. So now just switch the brush stroke. Go halfway. Start again. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. Don't worry about what's going on down here. Okay. I think that's a very powerful thing about. Um, paint how forgiving it is yes it really is actually and we'll see that more and more tonight it moves on quickly it just dries and it says you know you got another chance <laughs> just wait for like a few seconds i'll dry up and you can paint right over me okay and how far did you say to go up on the white so I, like, yeah, we want to go about halfway up that okay. whole section. Okay, okay. so see mine, I know it's a little bit tough, but I went until about here. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I'm going to look up and you guys can just give me a, a cue. You're done. No rush at all. Did you cover the whole top half? I did cover the whole top half. I went about halfway up the top half section. So, so this is where I started, where my finger is, and this is where I stopped. Okay. Okay, no need to go further than that. 
But even if you go further, as you said before, it'll dry and you can paint over it, right? Oh yeah. Um, the reason I give such uh, specific instructions is just that's how it has to be for paint night. But in, in reality, when someone's actually painting freely, they're not really calculating if it's exactly at the halfway, but that's just how you do it to give it over in such a you know, precise way. <laughs> And I started on the left side and painted over to the right. Okay. The brush ran out of white paint. Okay. It did the in other words, it was more white on the left side, but as I moved to the right, there was less paint left on the brush, so. Oh, you just gotta keep dipping it in. Just keep dipping it in. Oh yeah, yeah. It's gonna run out very quickly. You gotta keep dipping it in. You obviously don't want to wind up with any areas that have too much paint. You're going to see then it's going to be like lobby, but you want to get a nice even coat of white. Okay. Now I'm going to start instructing the next part, not to rush you guys, but the thing is uh, with acrylic paint, it also comes with its own rules. When paint dries, it can no longer really blend as well with another color. So I don't want to wait until my white is completely dry. So as soon as you are finished, I want you just to take your brush, no need to wash it, just give it a wipe on the paper towel. And I want you to pick up your light blue. Okay, so this is the blue that we made together and you're going to go, so this is the light color, we just made it. You're gonna go right above the white and I want you to try to just paint with this light blue until you're halfway up I'm gonna quickly sketch it out. Halfway up the remaining section. So whatever is left here, we're just gonna chop it up in half, go halfway up now with this light blue. So I do encourage you um, to use a little bit of water uh, on your brush when you're painting and keyword is a little. If you use too much, the paint will become too transparent, but the water slows the drying uh, gets the paint to be a little bit more flexible. And we want to try to get this paint on a little bit faster because we want to be able to blend between the light blue and the white before the white dries. So I'll let you all do this. And I'm putting my finger, my hand on the halfway point of the canvas so you always know where we are working. And I'll wait for you, everybody's... Uh, Cue, I guess. I'll, I'll see you guys holding up your brushes. You're done. Um, my my blue must not have enough white in it because my blue looks kind of dark. Okay, well, that's the thing. You can always adjust. So you have enough white. Add a little bit more white to the mixture. Make it lighter. Or you can show me if you're not sure. You could just show me the canvas. No, it looks like a pretty good color. I would okay. leave it. Okay. Yeah. I can hear someone's music. Is that yours? It is mine. This is my Are you guys done? I see some of you looking at me. Thanks, Razel. Leslie. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna just start the demo and uh, even if you're not totally done your blue, you can still look up here and you'll at least understand what I'm doing next. And it, it won't affect, even if you just paint it till here, till blue, it's okay. As long as you have a little bit of blue, what we wanna do is now create a nice transition between the light blue and the white. So what we're gonna do is now take a clean red or same brush that we've been using all along we're gonna clean it, then take a little bit of just water. So plain water. I'm gonna give the brush a little tap on the cup so it's not dripping too much. 
And look what you're gonna start to do. You're gonna start painting back and forth over your blue with water. And then you're gonna gently start to take the blue down into the white. Now you're gonna see very quickly that it may not budge right away. It's not moving very well. You're gonna have to keep drying that brush, picking up more water. And with the water, you're gonna paint over the blue and you're gonna try to continue the back and forth brush strokes and bring it down into the white. So do you guys see here what happens is I no longer have that really sharp line. So even if you just focus with the water on the area just between the blue and the white and keep working back and forth with water from one edge to the other, I'm not scared that you're gonna turn your whole um, painting blue by doing this because you have quite a bit of white as a buffer. So look how beautiful that is here. No longer see that line. So give that a go. I always recommend to uh, keep washing the brush, drying it off and redoing the whole step. And let me know it's starting to look. So if you see still, when you look back, if you still see like this really, really sharp line. Um, are you putting water on the top blue portion and then just trying to bring it down? Yeah, so the water is what breaks down the paint. So I go over the top portion and then I, with my arm, I bring down the brush stroke into the white. So I, the more aggressive you are with the back and forth going up and down, the more of a mix you're gonna see. And something that's even nice is that you could even bring, so let me show everyone, to make the effect even uh, more effective. What you wanna do here is even take with your brush a little bit of that light blue while the paint is still wet. And we wanna just add a little bit more color on the right side. So you just take your brush, take a little bit of that light blue and brush it in very unevenly. So some long strokes, some really short, and that also breaks up the white blue. We just don't want it to look like it was painted white and then blue. So you can pick up a little bit of blue and just bring it from the sides already. Like we were gonna do this after to make it look more natural, have the colors everywhere, but just see that difference adding the blue on the on the right side, what that has already made. And then uh, I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time on this transition. We're going to we can go back to this part of the sky because I don't want the, the light blue to dry. OK, so if you think that yours already dried, you can quickly put a little bit more or you can just quickly add a fresh coat after you add your next two colors. Um, before you do the blend. So we're going to add the last two colors. So I want everyone to look up here. This time, we are not going to add color, color. We're going to add color on the left and color on the right. It's a little bit different. So what I'm going to actually ask you to do is paint the left part of the top of the canvas all the way to the top. And if you see here, I'm not actually stopping with this line here. I'm, I'm letting the strokes be loose and messy. I just want to paint the top left side light blue. Okay, so it's just continuing. And then I want to paint the right side immediately after. No need to wash your brush for this going from blue to blue. You're then going to add just your regular blue at the top, just the regular. And you're gonna, it's okay when you actually see when I'm painting to right to the middle, I'm letting the, the stroke stay messy because this is just called color application. We're just getting the paint on the canvas. What we do next, all that cool blending um, will come after. Not only do I want you to add the blue, I even want you to add a little bit of purple right below it, even though there's paint there already, just to get us going for the uh, 
for the blending to start getting the colors on. So if you can try to prepare something like this where it's all blue up here with a little bit of purple below and give me a thumbs up um, when you have it and we will uh, start the blending. Thanks, Rachel. That looks great. I'm holding it up real close. Thanks, Leslie. I see so many of my brush strokes. I think I've used too much water. You know what? The thing of painting is that it's not going to be wrong because some paintings are are actually water paint is water based. So that would be the style you see in paint in many types of paintings with more water. But if you don't like the style, I, I personally like it. Use just less water moving forward and you'll see less of your strokes. So everyone, I want to just start the blend even if you're still working because I don't want mine to dry. So I wanna show you what I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm gonna actually quickly put a little bit more blue at the top, so do that with me because I see on the original, it's a little bit darker here. If you look, there's a little bit more blue on top here. And now I'm going to start getting this to flow together. So you're gonna need a bit of water to really get this moving. What you wanna do is keep taking a little bit of water and you wanna go from the top back and forth from left to right until you start to move down into the actual painting. Now, if you see here, I'm running out of water, so it's starting to look a little dry. So when you start to get an effect that's looking really like scratchy, um, it's not an effect you want, you gotta just clean your brush, pick up some water, and just gently start from wherever. You wanna try with the water to keep the, the, the brush strokes really smooth and long, and you really wanna to start to see that paint um, travel into one, the colors travel into one another. So if you see what's happening here, um, it's starting to look more like a sky. And I, and I want you to also add, so everyone, I, I'm giving you a lot of instruction, but look at here. Sometimes the water doesn't just do the trick. You may need to go back in and add a little bit of white everywhere. White is also a blending, uh, blending's best friend. So if the paint is feeling a little bit dry because it, it dried, you can just go back in really anywhere and add a little bit of fresh white paint and then restart, you know, the water technique. And I'm going to show you where we don't want to be afraid of streaks here. We're not avoiding them. There's so many beautiful streaks in the sky behind us. We actually want to see that. What we don't want to see is very obvious sections of paint that we had when we first started. And I don't even mind seeing a little bit of color come down into the white. If you see here, it's okay if you start to see a little bit of water there. And whatever areas are starting to look a little rough, you just go back in and add a little bit of white wherever that may be. But what's important is really the back and forth from the left edge all the way to the right and having the strokes to straight. So I'm not going in like any diagonals here. I'm just focusing on the back and forth movement of straight strokes and adding a little bit of water and a little bit of white paint all over as needed in between. Oh 
So I also, if anyone's blue and their purple is looking very separate like mine, I want you to start to bring in colors from the side that are a little different. So look at my painting for a sec. And if you see here, the blue and the purple look very separated. So what we want to do is maybe bring the blue in a little bit lower from the sides over the purple. And you can even bring in a little bit more purple. If you want to see more purple in the painting, you know, this is your chance to add it to the sky is now. On the original, there is more color going down here on the right side. So don't be afraid to add it. This is just a beautiful sky with lots of color in it. But if you bring it, try to just bring it in from the right side and brush the strokes in in one direction. You could even add a little bit of purple to the top of the sky, anything so that it doesn't look very blocked off um, in sections. Like you just don't want it to look like this was the blue section, this was the white section. We don't want the, them to look like there was ever um, specific sections where the colors were. Okay, so at this point, um, I'm going to ask anyone who needs any extra technique. I'm going to add, if I look at the painting or I look at the one behind me, I see that there was more white in the bottom left area. So using that same brush, you can always just pick up some just white paint and just paint over whatever area you want to stay a little bit more light or a little bit more white. All right, so I'm going to ask uh, soon. I'm going to ask everyone to start showing if they're comfortable. Um, I have too much blue where it should be white. Okay. So your blue went too low. Uh, how do, how do I... So can you show uh, show me your painting? Oh. Uh, no, the, the blue is good there. Show me a little bit from further, further back. No, I think your color placement is really good. I don't think uh, you need to add more white. Maybe add a little bit more water. Oh, Ari, that looks great. Really good. Um, I would add a little bit more water, Adele, to yeah. get this, uh, to strokes to be a little bit more fluid or a little bit smoother, but your color placement is really good. Okay, I'll add water. Okay. Donna, very good. Can you add a little bit more white below where the colors are? Uh, right, because you just want to blend those colors with the white a little bit more. Mark, very good. If you can add a little bit of also a little bit of either water or white. Do you see between your white and your purple, there's like a line? Yeah, you don't want to see any very obvious line. So just with your brush, take a little bit of water and brush over that line, either with water or some white paint. We don't want to see any purple and blue line. Jessica, very good. Razel, Razel, uh, I don't know if you have enough white in your bottom left corner. You're going to need a little bit more white here. So you want to re-add it now, OK? And use water. Natalie and Jeff, very good. You also can use a tiny bit more white in your left corner, okay? So just take the white, plain white, and literally just add it to that corner. And then you could use a little bit of water, like we always do, to just blend it in to the sky so it looks more like natural, like it was meant to be there. So we don't wanna lose all the white. Much better, Donna, very good. Okay, and, and uh, the Kotel, just so you know, is actually only two colors, so it's a lot easier. <laughs> you guys did the hardest part now, but they're looking really awesome. Julie and, and Ken, very good. Awesome. So if anybody, I can't see what's below your blue, but I'm going to leave it to you to look. If you find, like this is where I started my work, 
if you find that you don't have really any area that's kind of light, you do want to have that light behind the trees here. You want to just add it now because you can't add it after you add your trees. So just take a little bit of white, go back and forth in the left, bottom left area. It should just be white from the bottom in that corner. So just add it for yourself now. Because it's easy to get all the paint and have it come all the way. It's very easy to buy, you know, by accident, bring all the blues down and then completely lose all the white that you started with. But that's the good thing with painting is that you can always um, add, you just don't always know where to add. So I do want to move on um, to the uh, Kotel, okay? So I want everyone to take out, as soon as you're finished, to take out your gold paint. We just want to make sure that our brush is clean. Um, and you're going to go right into your gold paint. And the only two colors that we're going to use in the Kotel are going to be gold and white with maybe some hints of yellow. And it's going to be a very similar, similar thing, like similar technique, but not the exact same. So I'm going to take a little bit of gold paint with my clean brush. And we first want to make sure that we just have a straight line at the halfway mark of our canvas. So I didn't actually add this little part of the building here until after. So we're gonna pretend that the, our wall is starting at the middle. So that would mean that we need to go across with a straight line. So I'm gonna show you now the second way to use this brush. You've been using the wide stroke all along. Now, using the same exact brush, instead of going across with a wide stroke, you're gonna twist the brush to the side and you're gonna get a very thin, narrow stroke and you're going to go all the way across right under your white so let me show you up close what this looks like so let's say i was uh, my middle was right here where my finger is that's where i started painting don't worry so much about what's above if you need to add a little bit more paint or to blend your sky more that's fine just focus on where the coattail is so it's at the exact halfway mark so if you see here, by taking my brush, and instead of going across with the wide, although that would actually work too, if you're careful, um, you're gonna just twist it to the side and you're gonna just try to go across and make a straight line with the gold so you know where to start painting. So if you don't uh, have a straight line on the first go, well, you can keep working at it until it is straight enough, okay? so just taking it slow across. And just by doing my coattail, I can already see very clearly how my sky is gonna look behind it. And I'm just gonna just add a little bit of water down white so that it doesn't look so sharp. The color is just starts gradually. It doesn't just start out of the blue. So a little bit of white to blend that out and I like that better. So we're gonna just go right across. And now let's see where the coattail is, um, how far down we're going. So we're gonna look at the spot. So we know that the floor is about three inches long, okay? So if you're not sure what three inches is, uh, I always say to put a, your thumb at the corner from the base to the top. That's usually gives you about two inches. So we wanna go a little bit more than that to get our three inch. Our, so I'm going to do my thumb would have been here and I'm going to go about an inch more. So I'm about here. So it really is, there is quite a bit of floor. It's not all Kotel. So make sure you're leaving that space for the floor. And now you're going to go across with the same line. I have a question. Sure. The, the, the paint doesn't it runs out like midway so you just you got to just keep and gold especially there's some pigments that are more transparent than others so gold is one of them so you may find that it looks a little see-through that's just all gold paint no matter what kind of gold it will look a little bit like that it's a metallic just keep adding more 
Okay, and the and really acrylic paint is all about layering. You're gonna see the more and more you paint, the less you're gonna have that feeling where you can see the canvas. Okay, so let's see. Yeah. Now, very nice, everyone. So I'm gonna show you really what the color application is gonna look like uh, in a sped up version. Uh, so you guys know what's coming. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna do a combination of just gold and white brush strokes all over the area. And then we're gonna do the back and forth blend with our brush over the colors to get them to look a little bit smoother. So if you don't want to do the whole thing at once because you're afraid that paint's going to dry, don't. What you can try to do is we'll just work from the top, uh, top part first, and then worry about the bottom half. So when I say uh, brush strokes, I just mean very loose using the wide stroke, just taking your brush, just doing a quick back and forth. This is a different way of applying paint. We're not adding it in a very condensed solid area we're scattering the brush strokes okay because that is the nature of this surface is where it's a lot of color a lot of uh, gold and white in very little sections so i'm going to scatter the area until it's like i don't know like half 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 of it is full and then i'm going to fill in the gaps with white. So I'm very generously going to start putting white in the same very loose stroke kind of way, not even worrying about getting it on the gold because all this is going to be blended together. And I'm just worrying. And I'm also going to add some of that white even under that top line. I know if, you're, if you wound up with a line that's a little bit thick, don't be afraid to get white over there. And the white is like the filler here. So if you look at my canvas really close, there's not much space for anything else. Now I'm going to try to see if I can see everyone's painting as they're painting. So I know when to start transitioning, but as soon as I, I still see your arm going, um, I think I need paint by number. <laughs> Don't say that yet. Everyone always says that in the middle. And then they go like, what did I, did I do this when it's all done? It's I, like, I'll be honest with you. When I do uh, my own paintings, I paint professionally aside from teaching paint nights. A lot of times halfway through, I'm like, oh, this is not coming together. But it's, it's really so many times it's that finishing, those finishing details that make all the steps make sense. So very common for people to think that their painting looks like a mess <laughs> at this point. So you just put, once your brown, your gold is in, you just start smearing white. Do you see? Yeah, you basically try to put the white in between the gold. So there shouldn't be any canvas that's left um, untouched. Oh, thanks, Leslie. Okay. So I want to show everyone, uh, I want to show everybody this technique before we actually um, dries up. So I'm going to leave it to you to see it, me do it once and then understand what you're doing for the rest of the coattail. So if I look at my canvas and I'm ready to blend, I'm just going to quickly add a little bit more gold because I'm always afraid that the paint just uh, dried, but that's, that's paint. You just keep adding it as you go. So I have my paint. Now I want to get that smooth texture. So like we did before, we're going to take our brush. We're going to pick up a little bit of water and we're going to go right from the top and we're going to start blending right through all the gold and all the white until we start. And you, you can actually try to go a little bit fast. And once you start doing this, 
you should start to see more of this effect instead. So if you look up here, instead of seeing, um, you know, very obvious dry marks of paint, you're just seeing like uh, very, very soft brush strokes of the gold and the white blended together. So obviously if you wanna see, you know, more of one color, you can always add in a little bit more gold or you can do the entire coattail and then add in some more, you know, we can even have fun, add a little bit of yellow. We can even add a little bit of purple to, you know, have fun with it. But the technique needs to be understood first where you add the color and then you get the water to make it really smooth. Okay. Now, if your painting is not looking smooth, it's either that you don't have enough water or you don't have enough paint. So you're going to have to add either more water or more paint if you're not getting a really nice um, smooth effect. Okay, and now I'll have you just do this same thing. Like if it worked well the first time, you can show me. Um, let me see up close, Tal, looks really good. Okay, awesome, very good, everyone. I can't tell uh, if any, there's any dry spots, okay? So I'm gonna count on you to look at your canvas. And if there's any area that looks a little dry, make sure to add the paint and do it again, okay? And repeat the whole step. Um, mine doesn't look as smooth. Well, it just looks kind of all blend. I see. Okay. So uh, did you do the whole thing already? Yeah. So let it dry and then you can add in, I think you just need a little more contrast. I think your white took over. Yeah. A lot of water. Once it dries, I'm going to have you add more gold streaks. Oh, but so not now. Put it down. Yeah. Don't do it right now. Okay. And I'm going to give everyone the go ahead now to restart and do the same thing now on the bottom half of their canvas. Um, so I'm going to hold it up again. Now, if you found that the, the top uh, was a little bit too light or you wanted it to be a little more gold, or if you want to make now the bottom half a little bit more prominent in terms of richness of color, try to add a little bit more gold on the bottom than you did before. So that means you're going, I like to really take the paint like really heavy. It's easier to work when there's, you know, enough paint on your brush to just, so if you found that there was too much white the first time around, now you can add a little bit of that more, that gold color, a little bit more, or vice versa. If you found that there was, it was all way too, too bright, but usually the white by nature will take over uh, the gold because it is a stronger color. Gold is a, is, is a metallic and it's a, not as strong as any other color. So I added my, see, so I didn't even stick to the strokes. Like I even put some just like wherever I really wanted that gold to show, I just made sure to add it. And then all I'm gonna do with the white is add in a little bit of white wherever I can before I start the blend. So I don't want you guys to actually wait for me. As soon as you have enough paint on your canvas, okay, and you feel like you can already start playing with the paint, I, I want you guys to try experiment painting with a little bit more paint on the canvas. It's wonders what that can do when there's just more paint to work with. So if you put a little bit more gold or a little bit more white, you're, you may find that it is easier when you go ahead and you start to do your blending. So I'm liking the colors that came out on my coat towel. I'm gonna see what happens if I add a little bit of yellow. I did it on the one behind. Oh, 
This line and this line don't look very good. What do you mean? Well, it's an uneven line. Kind you can of try to straighten it out. With just with gold. Yeah, just do it with a little bit of gold. Work on it until it's the way you want to see it, okay? Okay. You guys can start holding them up. With that. To get um, can I ask, how easy is it to get the paint off your hands? Uh, it just takes a little bit of warm water and it'll come right off. <laughs> okay, that's all because I'm, I'm a mess, but I just wondered. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Welcome to painting. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, everyone. So I just want to show you how to add a little bit. Um, if you want to add a little bit of uh, either yellow um, let me just show you quickly how to do it. If you want to add a bit of yellow, I'm just adding it to the top uh, left side. So take a, just a tiny drop of yellow with your brush, not very much. And you can just brush it in from the sides by really pressing very lightly. You don't want it to be abrasive. You can also add a little bit of yellow, a little bit in the middle here and there. It just adds a little bit of a, a brighter uh, color, but I just don't want you to add too much by accident. So. If you're adding the yellow, just be very careful to just do it very carefully with only a little on your brush. And I want to just also give the the wall, the coattail a, a rest. So I see on some of your paintings, um, some of you, the gold wiped out completely with your whites. You may have used too much white, but if you try adding gold to white that is wet, it won't go on. They'll like keep trying and you'll keep trying and nothing will work. So I actually want to give the hotel a little rest. I want to move on to the floor, which isn't so much. And then I want to jump right back to the wall and just add some finishing touches with the gold um, to make it look, to bring out that contrast a little more. So just pause what you're doing, if you don't mind. No more wall for just a sec. We're gonna jump to the floor now, okay? So that doesn't mean that we're done with the wall, we're just taking a short break. So we're gonna do use the same colors that we used uh, in the sky now um, on the floor. So starting, something very similar way that we're starting here, we're gonna take that same red brush and we're gonna start with the floor. So we wanna actually paint white right underneath the uh, coattail and we want the white to go right under the gold and travel halfway down. Or actually, if you can actually make it travel most of the way down, that would be better. Most of the way, you can leave like half an inch at the bottom that doesn't have paint because that's where we're gonna add the light blue. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of light blue and we're gonna add a little bit of purple there. I think my hotel is blending into the floor. So anyone's hotel is blending in. Just know that we're going to be adding very sharp lines on the bottom and at the top. So don't worry about what that immediate line looks like, right? Because that's going to be covered. Obviously, you don't want the whole hotel to just be completely blended uh into the into the ground my coattail it shrunk it shrunk eh so too much floor <laughs> okay so let's make the floor really pretty if that's the case <laughs> so when you're almost at the bottom what i want you to do is pick up a little bit of blue okay and i want you to put the blue 
right at the bottom. So really like at the last inch, no more. And it needs to be below the, the, the white paint. There can't be any separation between the paint and the new paint. There can't be any canvas there because we want it to blend into something. So I'm gonna go halfway across with the blue and then I'm gonna go the other half with a little bit of purple and see what's, see, you can see what I'm gonna be doing. So we added the purple, we added the blue and now we wanna just gently blend with the white. So it looks like the sky is, the reflection of the sky is going into the floor. So does everyone see what's going on on the floor here? It's mostly white. And then we added those colors at the bottom and we're gonna blend them out uh, now. So we added the colors. Once the colors are there, like always, you uh, wash your brush, take a little bit of water, and using just water, you're going to paint over the purple and the blue in one shot. So it doesn't matter if one is covering the other anymore. I'm just going right over both of them. And I'm cleaning my brush maybe a little bit more, getting a little bit more clean water. And then with the water, I'm going to start painting over the line between the white and the colors. And I'm going to try by going back and forth with my brush, I'm going to try to bring those colors, play around with them so that they cut, go up into the floor, into the ground a little bit more. So I started off with just white and then blue and purple, like just placed down. And then using the water and the blending, I created more of this effect where it's really smooth. And looking back, okay, like if you do it once, and you realize you want to see a little bit more of, uh, I'm going to add maybe a tiny bit more purple on the right side because there's more colors on the right side of the sky. Then you can add in whatever colors you want very gently once the initial blend is done. You can't do this at the beginning. So I made sure everything was blended. And then if you want to add a little bit more color on the floor, you can, because it's supposed to just be a direct, uh, direct reflection of the sky. So let's do that. And like always try not to lose your whites. There's always uh, you can always add it in quickly when things are dry, but try to not do, do it from the get go. So you don't just don't have to remember to do that after. But white's a very easy color to just re add wherever you want to see it. Okay, and that is it. We're not going to do too much work on the floor here. And you can let me know with a thumbs up that you finished the floor. Let me see, Jessica, very good. Yeah, very good. Hold it up a little bit further back. Yeah, awesome. So with your sky, I see a lot of white underneath those colors at the top. Did you wanna add a little bit more light? You meant to do that? Okay. <laughs> okay, so just check in, awesome everyone. Um, Leslie, can you add a little bit more white under the Kotel? You could either do that now or do that later. So you blend it very well, but when you hold it from back, you see that you don't see that really bright, right white anymore. Donna, uh, did you blend between the white and the color? Try to blend it out a little bit more, a little bit more water. Very good, Adele. 
Oh, I don't see any blending, so much blending between the white and the colors Adele. So if you could take a little bit of white paint and just paint over that line of the purple and the blue. So it just looks a little bit more smooth. How low does the sky go? Like go to the Kotel, to the, to the wall of the Kotel? The Kotel go, sky goes right up until the question is what colors are where? So mm -hmm. you don't want to have, you can have blue right up into the Kotel. But if you just have all blue, you just won't have that light sky anywhere. So it wouldn't be wrong. You have to determine. It's like it's all sky behind the Kotel. Just some of the sky is going to be a little bit lighter. And some we're comfortable if like you can, you can have it a little bit, you know, a little bit more color. So even if I were to add blue right up until the bottom here, it wouldn't be, uh, really wouldn't be wrong. Um, but you just don't want to over, you just want to do this. So you you want to keep the, the smooth, smooth, uh, blending of the colors without losing any of them, um, all together. So I still have my white here. If anyone, for some reason does not have their white now, if you can see now that the sky is white, uh, is dry, it's much easier to go in. And even if you have any areas that look really like, um, rough or not blended, just using a little bit of water and a little bit of white over those areas really will help them out a lot. But um, I just want to add one more thing to the Kotel while we're still using gold, because we're not going to use I it. I interrupt you just one minute. I didn't hear at the bottom where I was supposed to add at the bottom. Oh, well, you added the colors correctly, but when you showed it to me, I saw color and then I saw white. I didn't see any blending between the two. Oh, and how do I do that with the blending? With a bit of water, like just how we've been doing all along, just back and forth with water. Much better, Donna. Much better. Um, so I just want everyone to add one more thing before we get to our trees, okay? Our trees are going to be lots of fun. But uh, if we look at the Kotel, we have That's one right. little detail here that we're missing. So besides the people and the bricks, um, we have a little part of the wall that goes up a little bit higher. So it would have been too hard to add it while we were blending because we would go over for sure. So we almost want to re-add it now. So to match the color that we most probably have, we're just going to take a little bit of gold and white on our plates, mix the two together until you get this like light, uh, very light gold. Or could even, you could even just use like, doesn't matter what the combination is, but if you just use gold, it'll be obvious that you did it after. And all you want to do is create on the left side, you want to go up about an inch and you want to create this like uh, rectangle. So look how I'm doing it. I'm taking this makeshift gold white that I just uh, made. And you can either just paint across until you're about three inches in. Do you see that? And then paint down to square it off. You want it to look like a rectangle. It's not blended. You just go across with the wide stroke. And then when you're going three inches in, you just paint right down until you hit the coattail. Now we don't want it to look like it is separate from everything else we did. So with whatever paint you used, you wanna quickly use that same paint to paint a little bit back and forth brush strokes over the area below it. So it looks like it was part of your work all along. We don't want it to look like it was um, just added. And at that token, even if some of your, uh, if your coattail has started to dry even a little bit, if you wanna add a little bit more, um, just plain, plain gold, I like to add it sometimes at the top or from the sides. We don't want our coattail to be too light or too white. We really wanna have that rich, those rich colors but this will only work if you're, if it started to just dry up even a little bit. If it's still very wet, then you can't do it. But if just by going at the sides and adding a little bit of pulling in some paint with vertical strokes and using water when you need, do you see what a difference that made? If everyone looks up here, I just added some more gold and it makes such a difference on my painting. Okay, so just try to make sure that you don't end up with a white wall. That's not, um, uh, it, you won't get the best effect. So if you need to add in a little bit more gold at the top of the wall, add a little bit more, maybe right at the bottom, 
with everything I'm doing is with the wide stroke here. And you can add just a few more strokes. We want to avoid using any whites, okay? No more whites. All you can use is gold and water to help you blend. So that's it. I want everyone to start holding them up when they're done because we get to move on to the trees. We're gonna be putting away the gold and the blues. Beautiful, everyone. Thank you. Really good. I love the gold edition that everyone added. Very good one. with um, everyone's what they've done so far. I like the addition. Some people added a little bit more gold and I can tell by looking at them, they're a little bit brighter and that looks awesome. So we're gonna just- Can, can we get a little, can we get some feedback too here? Yeah. Julie and Ken. Julie and Ken, let me just make you big. I didn't see you guys. Hold them up. Oh, I see you. Uh, <laughs> hold it back a little bit further. <laughs> Looks really good. The only thing I would say is if you can, you don't need to do it now, but at some point, just add more white right below the coattail. Like half of the floor should be white and just use water to blend it in. So when you're showing it to me from far, I'm just seeing purple all over. You really want to see that white that blends into purple and blue. Okay. That's the only thing. Okay. The top okay. is blue. So I want to move along for time purposes, although I could, I'm known to be painting, I could paint for six, eight hours at a time, really without stopping, not even kidding, but I don't think you guys want to, you, especially if you don't paint too often. So to try to keep the schedule, we're going to move on to your trees. Everyone that I saw looking really, really good. So I'm going to hold up. This is going to be a whole new set of instructions, new brushes and everything. So if you still have room on your plate, I would like you to make some green. So this is how you make green. You first take a little bit of yellow wherever you can sort of fit it on your plate. We're gonna put a little bit of yellow. You can scoop it up. As you can see, there's not so much green on the painting. You're not blending anymore, so you don't need all that paint, but whatever, make as much as you, you wanna make. And let's see, where did I put my, uh, my favorite brush? Okay, lost on the job. I'll have to take another one. So we're going to take our same brush that we've been using, although I, I know I told you you're going to be moving to a new brush now, but I'm just going to show you, I always want to use a good medium-sized brush to make a new color. So to make green, you're going to put yellow on your plate. You're going to take a little bit of blue, and you're going to mix the, a little bit of blue into a lot of yellow. Now, if you add too much blue, it's going to turn turquoise very soon. We don't want it to be turquoise. It's going to turn into this really bright colored green, like almost like a, a lime green. Um, we're not gonna get this dark green that you see here at the back and that's okay. So as soon as you have your lime green, you're good to start. Um, can, oh, um, can you use the blue that's already on your palette here? So yes, you can use the the um, um the green that's the blue. Sorry, you could use the blue as long as it uh, as long as you're not using the light blue. If you're just using the regular blue that's in your kit, then yes. So I just want to do a quick example 
So once you have your green, if you look at the painting, the green that we're using is not bright, right? For a reason, we, it wouldn't look too nice on this type of painting. It's more of like an army uh, or more of a sage green. So this green has, has a little bit of black in it. So once you are just have your regular green that you, you get by mixing uh, a little bit of blue into white, I want you to see what happens when we add a little bit of black to the mixture. So I took my green, you're gonna take a drop of black to start and start mixing. And you're gonna start turning that green into this like forest, we call it like forest green. It's gonna look a little gray. So don't be uh, taken aback that this is not green anymore. It is green. It's like a green gray. So imagine if you had a dark gray that was mixed with green, that's the color that we are using. So we are gonna make, um, try to make enough of it because we not only want to use this dark green for the trees, but we want to use um, a lighter version of it as well. So make sure you have enough. So I made the one version and that's going to be green number one that we're using. Green number two that we're using is going to be that same green mixed with a little bit of white. So once you have the green that was mixed with black, you take a little bit of that new mixture and bring it into some white and make yourself a light version of it. So we wanna work with two tones here. We got the light and we got the dark. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I want you to find your orange brush and hold it up for me when you're ready. The orange brush. You mean this little one? Yep. That's the one. Your little orange brush. It's got a little square square head. That's the brush we're going to use for the trees. Excellent. So this is the brush that we're going to use. I want to give just a quick uh, explanation of how to build these trees. So every single tree, we have quite a few. We have three dark ones and like five light ones. You don't have to do this exactly. Every single tree started off with a straight line, which I'll show you how to do. And look what happens after we have. So I'm going to demonstrate on one tree. Please do not do it uh, yet. So number one, when I'm already looking at my painting, I already see that my dark green isn't that dark. So I'm just gonna quickly add a little bit more black, really get it to be like a nice dark uh, forest green. So I'm gonna add a little bit more black. And now that I have the green that I want, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this brush, gonna dip a little bit of paint. Now, in order to make a straight line, there's two ways. So you also have a green angled brush and you have this orange brush that's flat, but they're both about the same width approximately, and they're both small. So I'm gonna show you how to use both of them. So when you're using just a flat, like your orange brush, this is how you would make a straight line. What you first wanna do is figure out where the line's going. So we know on our painting that the first line is gonna go right, like maybe half an inch next to where that, you know, that extra addition to the wall went. And it's gonna be the tallest line. It's gonna be about four inches long. So I'm gonna go two inches. And then I'm gonna go a little bit higher. The biggest tree that we have. You can do this with me. So I'm using the narrow brush stroke this time. I'm not using the wide stroke. That would give me a thick line. I'm twisting my brush to the side. All bristles are down on the canvas. And painting a straight, Thin line. Okay, so all bristles are touching. We're using the thin angle technique and we are just making a straight line. We're going to do one. And we're going to put uh, just two more somewhere on the top of the coat towel. We want to like sort of place them before I start showing you how to make them look like trees. 
So we have one over here. And if you look at the painting, I want you to put your finger down at the like middle halfway mark of the painting. So that would be here and it's not there. Once you're at the middle, I want you to shift over about two inches or so. That's gonna be where the next tree goes. Um, so try to keep the line straight and keep it a little bit shorter than the line you just made. So at like about, an, maybe if that one was four inches, you're gonna make the next one about three inches. You're gonna leave a bit like an inch of space and you're gonna make one more again. We're trying to make them all slightly different heights. And while we're already working, I also want to build a little half circle uh, on this part of the wall. So half of the wall is actually going to have a line right on top of it with a semicircle shape, like a half circle, because that's going to be um, we're going to make it look like something after, but that's just something that you can just put there now just to get it out of the way. So always, always, always you're drawing when you're actually drawing a shape out, you're always using the thin brush. So you actually have to actively twist to keep the line thin all along. And when you're painting something in, you're using the wide stroke. Okay. So let's do that. And I think is that, that black or green? Green, it's very dark. Okay. Darken it up if you have to. So everyone, whatever brush you think that's gonna give you a thinner, um, thinner line you can use. So if you're using an angled brush, let me just show you that there's only one difference that it, with the angled brush. You also just use the um, narrow brush stroke, not the wide, okay, not that. But there's a little um, addition here. When you're using an angled brush, you just wanna make sure that you're leading with the short angle. So if you're drawing a line from the top to the bottom, short angle is leading or vice versa. If you're going from the bottom to the top, short angle would be leading. That is with an angled brush. With the uh, orange brush, that's just a flat tip. You don't need to worry about what angle you're going in. You just want to always make sure you're painting with the thin, uh, obviously the thin side of the brush. But let's see why we need these lines. So this is how we build a tree. We go to every single line that we made. Um, and what you want to do is leave a little bit of space at the top. So maybe about like half an inch of space and you want to start creating. So I'm showing you really up close diagonal lines that are coming out of both sides of the tree. So look what's happening on the left side. And now if you find that if I find that sometimes if you go from the middle and go up a little bit quickly, you get a bit of a sharper thinner line because you're using the speed to your advantage. So what you want to do is start by making the just uh, really, really, really small marks that are coming out. So everyone look at me do it before you do the whole thing. Okay, just watch me. So you want to try to keep it more or less even as you start reaching the bottom of this tree, you want to make the lines a tiny bit longer. Obviously, in this case, you just have to pretend that there's we're seeing the left side of the tree. You can't really see it. But if you see on the right side, we're going to make the marks a little bit longer. And then this is really key here. At the bottom, you're just going to have to put some straight strokes to close off the tree. Fill it in wherever you want. And at the top here, to make it look like it's like a natural transition, like a triangle shape, you want to make sure that at the top here, you add teensy tiny little marks while leaving the top uh, really thin. So there's no limit to obviously how tall you can make your tree, but if you see it from far, you start to see the uh, effect. And if you want to make your trees even a little bit, uh, see more of them, mine are really thin, but I'll show you what it looks like if you want to add um, a little bit more if you want to make them a little bit fuller that is totally fine 
as long as you're using the appropriate technique. So we just used um, dark green. You wanna do all of your trees and I want you to make sure that you're getting this sim like a similar effect. I don't want it to look like very solid, like a solid triangle. And I'm going to do it again now on another tree. So Ari, I think you may have missed the uh, first tree. I'm doing it again here, okay? So you're starting off with a line. You always want to skip about half an inch and you want to make, coming from the line going up, you want to make a series of like diagonal lines, like almost like really like spiky almost on both sides, all the way down until you have no room to go. What you want to do when you reach the bottom is start to make the lines a little bit straighter. So that ends up looking like a more of like a triangle. And then at the top, you want to just add a few little ones so that it naturally finishes and gets. So we want to aim for more of a triangle shape. That tree doesn't have much in it. So once you do it once and you have the shape down, you can go back in, add a little bit more paint, make the tree a little bit more full, play around with it. And I want you to do this on all three trees. Sarah, are you holding it up? You want to hold it a little closer if you can? Looks really good. I can't see everyone's. Uh, make sure at the bottom, I think one of your trees, make sure you don't forget the straight strokes, okay? You want the bottom to be like flat. You don't want to see that angle. Very good, everyone. So once you get a hang of them, you can do as many as you want. So what I'm going to do here is just quickly finish my last green tree, but I want you to move on to your lighter trees as soon as you are finished uh, your dark green trees. Because we also want to add a bit of like uh, more color to some of them or some highlights. So I want to make sure all the trees are there. So if you could just take a break everyone um, from actually building your trees, just do the lines with me so you know where to work, okay? So that way I can just tell you to paint away and you know where to do it. So just watch, just take one moment to stop your dark green trees watch where I'm placing my light green trees. So you guys can obviously put your, you know, you don't need to have as many as, as I have, but um, let me just, I'm gonna see my light green. Maybe I'll add a touch more green before I actually use it. So let me just show you guys where I'm putting my lines. So I'm going to put a two inch line um, that's really much shorter than my first, about an inch away from my first tree with the light green. I'm going to try to fit in a teensy tiny little one. Also another inch away. So that's going to be the smallest tree yet. And if you can try to fit three trees, all the way on your right side, that would be awesome too. So just watch me. I'm gonna make mine a little darker because I can't seem to actually see the green over my blue. So even if you need to go a little bit darker for these trees, that's okay. So I'm putting one long one. This could be the same, same uh, length as this one. So one long one just in the middle of this space remaining. And if you can try to fit in two really small ones to fill up the space, that would be good. So there's quite a bit of trees. Um, my recommendation, if you are using a tree that doing a tree that is so small, a good trick is to use just the corner of the brush. So if you look at my green brush, do you see how there's like a tip, that really, really pointy tip? If you dip that tip into some paint, it can actually work as this super, super, this like, this like tiny line to help you with the small trees. 
you just want to make sure you're using it correctly because the small trees are going to be so small that they don't need to look exactly like the rest. They could sort of be like a semblance of a tree if they're tiny, okay? So let's work on our trees and we will, um, we will regroup, I guess, when you guys are done. Time to win, yamim yafim, harmus is git, a filu of shale famim. Yeladim be in a nacht la hope, kulam brim, yes, my hot bazalto. Matim nero, der posta der, mishun da barlano, lo kase, verafis ma she kase, yamit le mala. Yeah, I made the dome of the rock huge. Can I? Um, it's, ac it's actually not the dome of the rock. It's uh, it's just a, it's like a bush or something. It's it's. Oh, no, look, look. Um, it's just huge. Whatever I did there. It's a little bit bigger than your trees, yes. So the only thing you can do is is wait for it to dry and paint over it and start again. Or you could try to make your trees a little bigger so it's it balances out. Very good, Jessica. Excellent. Could I just put white paint? Yeah, you could cover it if it's dry. If the paint isn't wet, then yes, you could put white paint and cover it. And, and do How it long does it take to dry? Good question. It doesn't. I can't tell you. It shouldn't take too long though. Like maybe a couple few minutes. Just depends how much paint there was. So everyone, I just want you to do one more thing, okay, before we hop on over back to the Kotel and the people, which we're gonna finish off with. So I want to just add a touch of another color on all the trees. So what I want you to do is take a little bit of black paint, so very little, and I want you to go to every single dark tree, and I want you to add only on the right side, very carefully, a few hints of black. So just a few lines, like the same way that you were making the lines before, but now with a little bit of black paint and only on the right side, I want you to do that to all the, um, the, the dark trees. And you can see I'm barely even touching and I already have some sort of, uh, it's like, a, let's give the effect that there's a shadow. And you can do this on the light trees as well, but instead of using black, you can just go ahead and add the actual dark green that you, you know, that you were using because that would also make a great uh, shadow color. So we just want the tree to just have a little bit of a two-tone going on here. So on the left side of the light, I'm also doing 
a bit of dark green. So I did dark green on my on my light trees and I did a little bit of black on yeah on my dark trees. And if you want to even add a little bit, um, just to even add just a little bit of light green, just to do the opposite, because we're doing like the shadows. So if you want to show a little bit more light in the painting, you can also do the same thing with a little bit of light on the right side of some of the dark um, trees. So see, so you wound up with just like, you had solid green trees. And what you're doing here is just playing around with the different shades just to create a more three-dimensional or realistic effect to show like lights and stuff. So you don't need to work, uh, spend too much time adding these shadows, just a little bit of something, even if you add it right on the tree and wh wherever you add it, it'll make a difference just to see the extra colors. And uh, what I also wanna do is make sure that that circle, that semicircle does not remain a circle. What you wanna do, you can do this with your angled brush if you actually just use the corner to make like little marks around it little marks coming out we just want it to look like it was some sort of like greenery so not this perfect circle right coming out so you can just do just with that corner of the brush make some little marks so it no longer looks um just like a semicircle and sort of like we did before because it is dark, if you could take a little bit of light paint and add a little bit of some lighter marks on the left side to make it look like there's light hitting that area um, as well. Also makes it look a little bit more realistic. Okay. And that is it for the tree. So when I used to paint this painting, I like made the trees a little smaller, but then when I did it more, I actually really like to see a little bit more of the trees in the background. Could you show me again what you did with that bush? It, it's all filled in green? Uh, it was filled in green. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's all filled in green. But what you're also doing is you're just taking the back of the corner of your brush and adding some little marks all over the surface to make it look not perfectly round anymore. You see, you want it to look like it's a little bumpy. It's not supposed to be this uh, perfect circle. And you guys can uh, please, please, please wash your brushes. Okay, when you're done. I would like to use the angled brush only for the rest of the painting. So that is your green brush. So please hold it up for me so I know you are ready. Thanks. Um, Thank you. What brush? Green. So it's the green angled, small green angled, small brush. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna hold up the painting here again and see what we have left to do. So it uh, looks like we just have some actual fine detail to add to the coattail. So we have these lines. This is an abstract coattail painting. It's not your typical brick after brick. There's just lines that would suggest that there were cracks in the wall. So to do this, we're gonna make a uh, little bit of a darker gold than what you started with. We're gonna add a little bit of black to gold. We're first gonna make a line right above the top of the wall. Then we're gonna make a straight line right at the bottom of the wall. Then I'm going to show you how to make these horizontal lines all over the coat tile and turn it into this uh, brick effect. And then last but not least, we're going to make some little people at the very, very end. So let's do the gold first. Um, so what you want to do is take your brush, take a little bit of gold, put it on your plate. Now, you don't want to use the gold as is because you may not be able to see it very well over the gold. So we're gonna turn this more into a bronze or a darker gold color here. So once you have your gold, I want you to take a drop, like a drop of black and mix that. Like when I say drop, I really mean a drop. Um, mix it into your gold until you have a darker gold color. Now it doesn't have to be super dark. It just needs to be darker than the gold that you 
started with. So if you do it and it ends up being a little too dark, you can always go if you have more gold and keep adding until it's the right color. I'm gonna check to see if it's the right color just by simply painting on the canvas and seeing how it turns out. So like I said, the first thing that you're gonna do with this gold is you're gonna paint a line, not only at the top, all the edges at the top, also at the bottom. So just a reminder, everyone, you're using your angled brush here. So look at me. When you're painting, do you see that there's a shorter angle here? Yeah, the shorter angle is what is going first. It's leading. So because I'm painting from left to right, my shorter angle is positioned on the right and it is leading. Tall angle is dragging behind. So I'm going to use a little bit more black in my gold. So you just so you guys can sort of see what I'm doing. In person, like on your actual canvases, you may actually see the gold really well. Uh, there we go. So I added a little bit more black. And you want to sort of contour, add a line right at the top to start. So you're not only going across the top here. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing at the bottom. So the very, very bottom of the Kotel. With this technique, if you have to add a little bit of water to the actual paint to make it thinner, you can, because you want to try to get a thin line. So the goal of getting a thin line is to try to not press very hard. The lighter you are with the brushstroke, the thinner the line's gonna be. So that the thin line isn't so important for what you just did, but it will be a little bit more important um, for the rest of the lines that I'm gonna have you do. Okay, so if you're getting a hang of the lines, okay, what I want you now to do is we're going to do a series of lines um, all over the can, all over the coat. we don't want to put too many, like we don't want to fill it up. So I'm going to give you an idea of where to start. So these lines are going to be about three inches long. What you want to try to do, I'm going to just do them. Uh, I'm going to just start by putting one, if you see here, it's about one inch below the top, like right where that addition was added. I'm going about, and this gold, by the way, was mixed with a little bit of water. So it is thinner. It's easier for me to get a thinner line. So I'm going about three inches and I'm gonna try to fit in about three more evenly, or not even so evenly spaced lines coming from the side like that. Okay, and now there is a method to the madness. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, and now we wanna to try to add them all along uh, the coattail, okay? So what I want you to do is starting from the bottom, after every line that you made, I want you to skip like two or three inches and make another line. Doesn't need to be the exact same length, but similar. And I want you to keep going until there's no more line, like you don't, you wouldn't have space to do another. So on the bottom here, I just have room for three because clearly if I wait, if I skip the two inches, I'm off the canvas, so good. And you wanna do it like more or less on every row, you wanna do something similar. So they might, they are gonna wind up being directly above one another and that is fine, just make sure and this one here, I don't really have, I'm gonna move my line a little bit lower because I clearly don't have room to do it if I start here, I'm gonna hit the top of the wall. So once you have something like this, it's a good starting point.
And what you want to do is now fill in the rest, okay? So the rest of the space, we want some more lines. So now you're going to do the opposite. You're going to go between every two line, like two lines, and you're not going to start at the edge. You're going to move and try to aim one. If you see here, so that wasn't so straight. But if you see here, I'm right between my two lines, but I try to aim it so that it's right in between the lines above it. So they're not directly below anymore. They are now landing. So I would be in the middle of these two, but I'm moving it a little bit more so that it lands somewhere else. And so on. So as soon as you actually get started doing it, you wind up with a bit of a pattern. And like I said, paint night is very step-by-step -step for a reason. But if you just were to actually put, if an actual, someone was just painting, they wouldn't be strategic. They would just, try to place them all over. So that's really what you want to do is just make sure you have these lines that are all over, um, nice and evenly spaced. And that is it. So the next um, thing that you're going to do, so you have your lines kind of all over. I'm going to hold up the original. So these are just horizontal lines. We want to now add some vertical lines to make it look like there's bricks. So look, there's going to be a little pattern to that too. I want you to go to about every single line that you made and you're going to choose. Okay. You're going to go, it doesn't matter where you start. You're going to go to the middle of the line. You're going to make a little small line in the middle of it, right on top. And if you do a line on top, I want you to make at the sides, two really, really shorter lines that are coming down at the bottom. Now, I want you to alternate. Sometimes you can make your line starting at the middle on top, but sometimes you can actually start the line at the bottom and make the other lines go up. So you don't need to stick to the pattern of starting at the top. You could start at the bottom, then just make sure the side lines go up. And you wanna do this all over. And I encourage you to skip some line. So if you don't need to do every single line that I told you to do, if you want to leave some out because it's starting to look crowded in one area, leave it. Do not force the lines anywhere. This is just like a starter for the technique, but you can take it in, uh, you know, your own direction. As you start to see the wall you can make some lines even a little bit longer than I told you. See how that starts to look. I think it looks really cool to actually make some of the lines longer. And you want to stop when you have like a decent amount. You don't need to over overcrowd the painting with them. Awesome. Very good. Razel. Excellent. So this is uh, if anybody at the very, very end of the painting, I always give the option, if you wanna to actually tone down some of the areas where you put these bricks, you can paint a little bit of gold or a little bit of white um, over some of the bricks, but you gotta do that once these lines completely, completely dry. So I'm just gonna grab, if you don't mind, just a little piece of paper, cause I wanna show you um, the shape, how to make the chassidim really close. Okay, so I'm gonna hold 
we're making really good time here. So we have one more step um, to this painting. So I'm gonna hold up my painting here and I wanna just forewarn everyone. By the way, we are, uh, looks like we are in the men's section. Looks like there's tons of black and white dressed people here. Um, obviously this is not, you know, you can have a mix of a crowd uh, at the Kotel, but uh, I do see Hasidim in a lot of Judaic art. It became sort of like part of Judaic art, the black and the white. I think it actually just looks really good on this painting, but you're free to paint, you know, whoever you want. If you don't want to copy these people exactly, you can, but I happen to think it just makes a really beautiful piece of art. So I'm going to hold them up close. So if you see what the, we're going to call them the men in black for teaching purposes, because you can see them a little bit better than the men in the, in the taluses. Um, when you look at the shape, I'm promising you now, you're going to say, oh my gosh, this is the weirdest person. I like, what did I draw? I did it wrong. It's going to look a bit funny. Okay. But uh, that is abstract art is that you would never even think that it looks for me. When you look at the painting from far, people are often portrayed in different ways. So we don't um, really in art really do the, often we, we wouldn't really ever paint, you know, someone the classic, you know, head, body, legs, and, and hands that you might envision in, in drawing a person we sort of paint the overall image of the person, um, the overall colors and shapes. So to make the people in black, let me, everyone look, make sure you're looking up here. You would basically start with a straight line. Now that straight line would determine how tall the person is, okay? Once you have your straight line, you're going to use your brush to make a little bit of a curve on the left and a little bit of a curve on the right. So if you see here, I turned, I started really thin, but I went out a little bit to the right. I went out a little bit to the left. It's creating this new shape. And then I took my brush, put a little bit more black paint and using the actual corner of the brush, I made a little, wasn't not afraid to press down, made a little bit of like a diagonal line and then a tiny dot above, and that is your person. So let's figure out where the men in black are, and then I'll show you how to make the everyone who's wearing a talus instead. So if we look at our painting, we have one right at the bottom left, maybe half an inch in. I'm just gonna start off by making my lines, and then I'm gonna turn them into people. So we're gonna do one there, there's one in the middle, same height, with a little smaller one, maybe a child next to it. Oh, I made mine very uh, on an angle. So sometimes if you don't paint in, right in front of your canvas, like you, like you are, or if you're actually just painting from the side, it's a little bit harder to gauge lines, but I see I did not make that straight. So try to make yours straight. So I was at the left, about one inch in from the left, I went to the middle. Now on the right side, I'm just gonna try to fit in one and then maybe a smaller one right over here. So if you can try to imitate something like this with your black lines, it does need to look exactly like this and then you can start. So one, two, three, I have five. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna take my brush as if I was painting a line, very mild curved line left and right. Now, if you made it a little bit, see if I made it like this, okay, you want to try to keep the bottom more point, a little bit more pointy. So be careful, like when you're making this shape, try to stop before you hit the bottom to try to keep the bottom of the person a little bit more thin, a little bit more sharp. Okay, so something like this.
Tanya. Yeah. Can you repeat how to do it? Yeah, of course. So, starting with a straight line, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna just do another one because I already filled up all my people. Straight line, okay? You're gonna take your brush from the top and you're gonna create a bit of a movement on the left and a bit on the right, okay? So you're gonna try to keep the bottom uh, really like sharp, do you see? Right. Uh, and keep a little bit of, you know, by going out at the top a little bit and keeping the top uh, thin too, you're just creating this sort of shape. Then you're taking the corner of your brush, making a line, like a diagonal line. You can press down there. It's just the corner and then a little dot on top to show the black hat. Okay, so on my people, I did the uh, bodies. Now I got to do the black hat. So I'm going to take my brush, make my diagonal line, and then my little mark on top, and there you go. And it can be in any direction. And we are gonna still add like white on them after just to break down the black a bit, but this is how you start, okay? And now every person, so like a lot of acrylic like paintings will have just marks like that and, and, it's, and it's a person, right? So it doesn't need to actually look like a, uh, what you would expect but we're trying to get these shapes. So uh, this is how you do the people in black. Now, I'll just give you a little bit of time to copy. I'm gonna hold it really close. Can you, can you repeat the, it again? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna do it one more time. So you start with a black line, okay? Then you add, with starting from the top, a little bit of like a, a little bit of a round surface on the left, a little bit on the right. You wanna try to keep the bottom a little pointy with the back of your corner of your brush, you make a diagonal line, and then a little line on top of that. And there you have your person, okay? And then I'm gonna hold it up. Now, for the people who are wearing taluses, there's quite a bit. You're just gonna make a short little black line because it's gonna be white on top of that. So we have one, two, three, and then four, five, six on my painting. So I'm gonna show you some of them even have black hats, but you don't gotta worry about that right now. What I wanna do is just make a series. Like, so wherever you are gonna have this person with a talus, I just want you to make a really small, like half an inch line with like maybe half an inch of space between. So you actually have room to make these people and it's just a line you're not doing anything more than this line i have one here and i'm going to put one here and i can try to fit another there so i'll show you the original so you can decide how many you want three over here one two three and then i'm going to actually show you uh, how to make it. Well, my characters look like they're wearing sombreros. <laughs> Very possible. <laughs> what, color, what color did you do those last lines? Everything was black. So everything that I've done so far is black. I'm going to show you now everyone how to make the next, the people that are wearing the, the Talisim. So you're going to use the same brush. You got to wash it. You got to dip it in a little bit of white. And I want to show you the shape. Okay. So you basically want to do something like this. You want to go, we've prepped where these people are standing. You want to go above every single little line you made. You want to make a little, an, a second white line right above it. I'm going to hold it really close everyone. So it looks like it could be a, uh, the height of the body. Once you have a line, what you want to do is pull some white paint down on the left, almost going, you can go over the black if the black is a little dry, but if not, don't push it. So if you see here, I pulled it to the left, like a, on a diagonal, and I pulled it to the right and try to drag it down over the black a little. And then I added a little tiny white dot on top of the body to show that there is a 
a head, okay? <laughs> you don't even need to put the head, really. The head can just go right in, because sometimes when these shawls are on, it just looks like an oval. So you don't even necessarily need a head. And I want you to do all of the people with the feet. And once that is dry, look what's gonna happen. You're gonna take the corner of your brush and you're gonna make those two uh, little lines right on top like that. And there you have it. So let's do that again. I'm gonna do it again. So you get the hang of it. So you took a little bit of white. We're first gonna extend the line so we know the height of our person. Once we know the height, we're gonna make a, like um, turn it into a bit of a triangle, a little bit to the left coming down, a little bit to the right. And if it can drape over the black a bit, even better, look at that. And we're gonna keep doing it. So some of them don't even really need, don't even bother like adding the head. It might look good without. You can add just like a tiny little mark. So that's really like something there. And if you need to add a little bit more black also, just like a tiny bit more black where the feet would be. So it doesn't look like just these really like perfect, you know, sticks coming out, then that is uh, fine too. And uh, I'm gonna show you where these, these uh, people are. So you can just uh, copy. So I know they're not so easy to see and I really now just want you to take the time to just look at the painting and try to copy it. Everyone, I'm going to do another demo on how to make the telus, okay? So look up here. I'm going to just make it anywhere on my painting, right? Because this is my teaching painting. So I'm going to, you always start off with a shorter line, okay? About half an inch where the feet, you're starting actually with the feet because you want the telus to drape over the feet. So a little half an inch line to start. You're going to wash your brush pick up a little bit of white. And the first thing you're gonna do is first determine how tall the person's gonna be by making a line, just a white line right above the feet. Once you have your white line, we wanna turn it into more of a triangular shape. So you wanna keep the top really narrow, but you wanna bring down the white a little bit to the left on a diagonal and a little bit to the right, right? So you turn it into more of a triangle but to make it even look more realistic, you wanna to try to take that white and take some of it down over the black by being very light with the brush. And that's how you get the effect of a talus, okay? So if you pull it down a little bit longer, the better. If you wanna add a little mark to show that there's a head underneath, that's fine. And at the very end, I mean, you can do this right away, but it's better to do all of them to let it dry and then at the very end, just to use the corner of your brush with a little bit of black to make these two 
um, curved lines that are facing one another to give the full effect of the talus. So when you actually look at this from far away, uh, it looks really cool. So if you, you don't even have to, if some of the men wearing white, if you want to even put a black hat so that they're not all the same, feel free to do that and see how that looks. If you put the black lines on the white talus, it, it's not dry, so it messes up. Yes, so you want it to let it dry in that case. There's a way to do wet on wet. If you're heavy with the paint and you're hardly pressing, then you can apply paint over wet paint. But if you even press just a little bit, it will mix in with the white. So try to let it dry a little bit and then go back and add the black lines. Okay? Yeah. Uh, it's I'm going to hold up the painting again, okay? Wow. Some of them are starting to speak. Wow. Very good job, everyone. Hazel, Julian, Ken, unbelievable. Sarah, you start hitting people, okay? You want to hold it up again, Sarah? Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Amazing. Okay, let me look. I'm looking at more. Holding it up, Leslie. Wow, beautiful, gorgeous. <laughs> Hazel, beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's a bit of a Thank you. So nice to be here. Who's next? Natalie and Jeff. Wow! Is this a team effort? <laughs> no. It's beautiful. Oh, you can one too. That is great. Amazing. Oh, I love it. So I'm not going to hold up mine. <laughs> okay, so let's see who else is holding it up. Uh, Yogi Donna. Beautiful, beautiful, amazing. I want to take a group, uh, a group picture, everyone. So hold on. I'm gonna just move. By Ari, let me just take a picture of yours. Beautiful. Okay, so I want to take a uh, group. So hold on, everyone. At the count of three, I want everyone to hold up their painting together, okay? So I'm going to go into gallery mode. If you could be in the picture, that would be even better. Okay, so one, two, three, and smile. Yay, amazing. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you had fun. Thank you. Tanya, are we supposed to sign our painting somewhere? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yes, I never sign obviously the samples, but if you are signing, you do have a brush in your kit that's, I think the blue one is very small. If you can find like the smallest brush in your set, uh, you generally would sign in the bottom right corner. You can just do your initials, um, script, or you can do your, uh, you know, your full name. With the signatures, you actually can't go wrong because even if they look like this, they'll look uh, cool and artistic. So have fun with your signature. Um, bottom right, okay? Tanya, this is amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. Thank you so much. This is uh, this is fabulous. Thanks for having me. Maybe next year in a in person event, I'll, I'll fly in. Yeah. Well, hold on. We should probably say next year in Jerusalem, but 
yeah. we'll, we'll make the next one by the wall, you know, of something else maybe, or we'll yeah. have it the wall right in front of us. So. Oh, imagine. Right yeah. in front of the wall and draw pictures of Atlanta. <laughs> or maybe Toronto, the sky, the needle, the... the sea Hold on, Jeff, are you from Montreal or Toronto? Toronto. We're both, Natalie and I are both from Toronto. Tom, oh. I think, from Montreal. Yes, wait, so you guys are from, I saw your, I had my gloves on and I couldn't, I didn't want to respond because you said, are you guys both from Toronto? Yeah, yeah. We're in Toronto. Uh, I lived at Bathurst, grew up at Bathurst in Eglinton. Okay. Me in the North End, but that's what good. brought What brought you guys to uh, Atlanta? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola? <laughs> My job. Oh man, what is that's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, and you are from Montreal. No, Toronto. Toronto? You okay. are? Yeah. I have a little like bit of a Montreal, Montreal accent. accent. Okay, so my family's French, so that's very cool. We're not Montreal French, we're Moroccan French. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> but that's where, if I, if you picked up on a little something, I grew okay. up only speaking French. <laughs> but we were not from Toronto? I live in Toronto. Uh, I live at Bathurst and Shepherd and Bathurst and Wilson. I'm not too far. Yeah. All my exercise classes are at the Eglinton. So. <laughs> Well, this is great. Thank you so, so this much. This is very fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I hope you guys had fun. Yeah. This was such a much needed stress buster before Pesach. So thank you. Me too, by the way. I had the most stressful day <laughs> cleaning and don't even know what. And I actually forgot about cleaning for a good two hours. Um, I have, we're vote, we're taking a rabbinic vote a little bit later tonight. We may think about just replacing Pesach with painting. <laughs> so the pain for seven days. We won't eat any bread. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're gonna keep keep the seder. Don't worry. Um, Tanya, thank you. This was amazing. This thank is. Um, I, I'm still gonna touch it up a little bit, but I am yeah. super stoked about this. And I saw everyone hold up theirs. It was tremendous. It was beautiful. Thank you for the guidance, the leadership, the the instruction. Thank amazing. You. Thank you. Thank you guys. All right, I'm gonna keep my computer on for everyone to keep painting, but I'm gonna um, head out. So have a good night, everybody. <laughs> and Ari, I guess you'll close the meeting, I guess, whenever you want to, okay? I'll close it, yeah, I'll close Thank it. You. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye Thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Oh, those words that mother said. Hi, Sandrine. Hi, Karen. <laughs> hey, Karen, it's great to see you. So you yeah, I mean, I happen to have all my own paint. So I, you know, Sandrine, and I forgot to notify you, Rabbi Ari, to please send me the link. And Sandrine is always, you know, she's always the one that looks no after worries. me. No yeah. worries. This is perfect. Yeah. This was so fun. I didn't have a big canvas, though. I only had a little canvas, but that's <laughs> fine. Okay, you'll have to do it again. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. That was great. This was great, Rabbi. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for joining. And you don't have to jump up yet. I'm still, I'm still touching on it as well. So stay on as long as you'd like. Um, you know what? I'll mention this. We're having a pre-Passover um, session called Prepping for Pesach, or Prepping for Passover, Sunday night at 7.30. Check our website if you want to join. It's going to be like kind of a crash course Seder, you know, do it at home or wherever you're going to be. Just kind of reminders, refreshers, things unique to this year because it starts Saturday night. So if you'd like to join 7.30 p.m. Sunday night um, and then next Wednesday, we also have another pre-Passover class on deeper meanings and themes of freedom. So all available on the website. Check it out. We'd love to have you join us for some more awesome programs. Oh, and one second, hold on, got to mention this, Monday night, this coming Monday night, we have a Passover jewelry workshop with our very own Donna, wave Donna, so <laughs> if you like painting, you'll love jewelry making, and I know some of you are have, have done jewelry making with us before, but it's gorgeous, and Passover themed. So wine, you know, wine themed. Wine themed, yes. So I ordered my the, 
yes. replacement kit that my sister took. So yes. when I picked that up or where it's it's available. I have it at Chabad or at my house. So just just text me or call me and we'll we can coordinate. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Pleasure, pleasure. I don't see you before jewelry making. All right, this was a lot of fun. Mark, thanks for being part of it. I didn't I think the lines, the lines from, from my stones look a little bit more like fences, but what the heck, you know. You know what? It's I think that's that's part of the fun. It's um, as Tanya said, it's like a little bit more abstract and less and less uh, concrete. So mine look like honestly, some of my lines in the walls are looking a little bit like football goalposts. But I got paper football here, so I'm game. Um, it's like I'm ready to roll. That's that an idea. Put a, put a football in the sky instead of the sun or the moon. That's an idea. That's and meanwhile, they're practicing against the Western Wall, and and, and we're wondering why. Um, Mark, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're part of it. Yeah, I. Uh, I think I decided not to put the the talisman on because I was afraid if I did that, I'd ruin the whole thing. Wait, say it again. I was afraid to put the talisman on because I was afraid I'd ruin it if I did. I put them on, and then I thought I ruined it, and then I realized, honestly, yeah. it's looking great. Mark, what I'm trying to say is ruin it. You can always start again. No big deal. Yeah. I like your picture. <laughs> I kind of like, I kind of like a, a real pro. A real pro could add tefillin now. To the I know. I know. Well, the question is, are we painting a Shabbat scene? In which case, oh, no tefillin, but also taboo. Like, are you even allowed? It? Like, I don't even know. That's like, that's. Let's get paint on the That's way too meta for, uh, for my. But yeah, that would be next level. You're right. If we had. Ooh, I just added a callus that may, mm, all right. Abstract, all abstract. That's Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Pam, is hey. that I was trying to show her what I painted. It looks great. Nice, nice. Cool. Pam, you're a professional artist, look at you. Beautiful. Unbelievable. You even came late later. Unbelievable. This is it. Who needs to buy art when you can make art? It's like a whole thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, by the way, you guys can upload this to um, the blockchain and sell it for sixty-six million dollars. That's what that's what all the kids are doing today. Ah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But if you do know what I'm talking about, then you do know what I'm talking about. I think they're called oh, NFTs. Only if it's signed by Rabbi Solish, though. Original <laughs> signature. <laughs> um, I'll, but I'll, 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 draw, this... I'll make my signature and then you guys can copy it. Did anybody put a black hat on the on the uh, the ones that are wearing a talus? I made that mistake first. I made hats and then I had to go big on the talus to cover it up. So I'm just wondering how it's going to look because I'm not really happy with the talus. I don't know what it look. It kind of looks. I think when I did my little black lines, it doesn't look like her black lines. It it just. I don't know, but I was thinking maybe I could do something by putting a black hat on one or two of them. But Karen, yeah. as, I, as I told you, my black hats look look like some brilliance. <laughs> I'm so shopping with the hats while I'm ahead. So I, I'll tell you, when you're wearing the talus, you wouldn't necessarily wear the hat. That's uh, the okay, then I'm not going to do it. Okay. Yeah. It's just from a distance, it looks more authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put it up all the way on the other side. Yeah, you put it up on the other side of the house. Yeah. And at that point, it's... <laughs> exactly. All right. Friends, this is... uh a special mood. What? Let me see your Sandrine. Oh. <laughs> nice. Wait a minute, Sandrine, I didn't see. Let's see. One more time. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. All right. Oh, it's Folks, beautiful. Don't, don't judge the rabbi too harshly. That would be me. But here, here's what it is. I feel like I should probably. Oh my gosh, you did a great job. Thank you. Beautiful.
If I move it, you guys can't really. Us, can you ever awesome. send us a picture of everybody? That'd be nice. I'm gonna ask Tanya for the picture, um, and then I'll try. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll send it out to the group. Adele, let's see yours. Let's see yours. Can you nice. See everybody, looks so good. Nice. Is it too dark? I don't know if you. No. No, no, that's no, good. They're good. I'm like very it. excited about cleaning up. <laughs> that's easy with the tablecloth. You did a great job. Well, I didn't do a tablecloth. I'm like, I've been standing the whole time that I'm in somebody else's house. I have no, no plastic cups. So I, I used, are you ready? The mugs for water i've got to go now scrub the paint off the mugs so i'll be cleaning all night now Karen, i have to clean some of the paint off my laptop oh no yeah i had it or or you can call it a custom painted laptop and that's <laughs> even more cool than look who's here is it awesome oh nothing's here yeah Breaking news. Hi, Chicago. Nelson, oh, Nelson arrived from Chicago today. <laughs> hi. Welcome back. His flight was delayed three hours, but he got here. He made it. Oh, wow, uh, yeah. Morning was... Uh... Yeah, Malka, that looks like the interrogation lights. I love that. So, so did any of the kids, did any of you kids paint over there at the Solish house? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Show them, hold up yours. Let's see. Yeah, we all did. Oh my gosh, let me see. Oh my gosh, oh my that's gosh. amazing. Show them. Tal. Yeah, are you not done, Tal? Sure, okay. That's incredible. She's a good teacher, isn't she? Let's China. see. Beautiful. This is Ellie Sandrine, she was too fast. Let's see. Let's see. I'm still working on it, but that's-, that's Wow, what... Tal, beautiful. Wow. Oh, oh nice. wow! Oh my that gosh, is. those Solish kids are are, are talented. Amazing. Oh. Awesome. Ali, step back so your touch of galaxies don't get inside. Paint them dim. Catherine, how did yours come out? Um, am I still on? Yeah. Um, it came out. Yeah. It came out good, but um, my trees look kind of look like ferns. Yeah, but uh, and my men don't look like they look weird, but actually it's pretty good. And I'm going to put it on Facebook. Love it. Love it. Yes. Fern is because you live in Atlanta. Pardon me? <laughs> exactly. Fern because you live in Atlanta. Yeah, right. We're and channel. also um, my all my guys with the um, they all have hats. So you said they weren't supposed to wear hats, but oh, okay. well, it's all right. It's all good. It was very, very fun. It was very, yeah. very fun. Thank you. Awesome. Glad you were part of it. <laughs> you know, I, I have a feeling that, that um, it, it, you know, when I'm looking at mine, it's funny because I'm thinking my trees are about the third the height of the Western Wall. <laughs> so uh, the trees are huge. <laughs> my, my little bush over here looks, does not, it looks weird. I it didn't look like the bush. Weird. Yeah, you I didn't. Know, mine, yeah, mine also looks a little, a little interesting. But you know, we're, go, we're rolling with it. Yeah. yeah, but my wall, my wall looks great with the coat, with the gold and the um, other darker white and the, the wall looks great. My sky could be improved and my people are terrible, but I can get the brush and um, wet it and smooth it out. Well, the thing is, Tanya is, is incredible. She's a great teacher. Um, I, I personally, I can't speak for all y'all. Oh, look at that. I'm Southern suddenly. Um, I can't speak for, for anybody else here, but I would say this would be a fun thing to do again. Just oh yes, yeah. oh yeah. By Definitely. the way, um, Tanya sent me a bunch of, of of options for 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 the art. I chose the Western Wall because I thought very very meaningful, significant next year in Jerusalem Passover. But there's a lot of art that we can choose from, so I would love to uh, to explore this again. Anyway, so stay tuned. Uh Thank you very much. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Pleasure. All right, folks, I think I'm going to, I'm going to officially close it. Um, 
Thank you for joining. Have a wonderful Shabbos and a wonderful week leading up to Passover. Um, remember, jump in. We have classes. We have resources. If you need any help, you know, getting ready for Pesach, Seder, Matzah, whatever, just reach out. Let me know. And otherwise, that's it. Laila Tov. Good Shabbos. Thank you. Thank you. Shabbos. Laila Tov. Yeah.